what I'm going to do today is I'm, uh, I'm going to take raw clay and process it or part, I'll use part of the process and uh, we're going to make uh, raw clay to, to, to clay that you can make pottery with. So uh, this is Eddie's pottery right here. What I've done is uh, my, my, uh, my wife and I's son, Andy, uh, here in central Illinois, uh, he runs an excavating business and he digs up he digs up ponds and trees and all kinds of other stuff with his equipment. And he called me uh, here a couple weeks ago and he had some clay that he was making a pond for uh, uh, a customer. And uh, he dug up some clay. He got all the brown, brown and red clay out of there. And then he ran into a big vein of what, what's blue clay. The clay was really, really blue. And uh, a lot of, if you look at a lot of these pieces, uh, these are all dried out now, but uh, I've take, I'm taking some of this. It's, it's all dried up real good. Uh, it, uh, you know, I've taken chip off the pieces into smaller ones, and we do that. Take a bucket of it, and what I've done is... Uh, I'm, I've, I've taken a, an old cement mixer that I have to make my slurry and uh, uh, I'm going to show you the process I go through on making it. As you can see I have some slurry in my old cement mixer which uh, I only paid a hundred dollars for this brand new so I know there I know you can get them out there fairly cheap uh, but this is much better than uh, 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 some of the equipment that you can buy at you know at uh, some of the pottery supply places but I'm gonna take this right here I've already added some of this slurry that's been in there for uh, about a week and I'm gonna add some of the clay back into this uh, to make more slurry and then I'll show you how I finalize finally process it add a lot of this in I mean, it doesn't take too long for it to break down. And I'll add in a little water. Yeah, pretty good. Now, uh, I'll uh, set this. And what we're going to do is just let this. Now uh, I'm going to show you some of the clay that I I processed into the liquid form. I shut the I shut the mixer off, and what I've got over here is uh, a lot of really really thick slurry clay that still needs to be put still needs to be dried. Over here I've I've added probably uh, a cup or two of uh, vinegar which, uh, you know, I learned from uh, uh, Simon Leach's uh, 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 videos that, you know, you add that in and it helps break the clay down and helps, uh, makes it pla more plastic and workable. And I have this one already full and I'm letting it set a little while. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm doing the same thing here. But now I'm going to show you how I got that far. I mean, I've, you know, you can go to garage sales and, and buy all the training equipment that you'd, you'd ever need without ever having to buy anything from a, 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 a pottery supply, but uh, this is this is my first, I strain, I strain all of the clay twice, and this takes out the big stuff, and, uh, and then we'll, I'll show you what I have to take out the, the real fine stuff. So, what I'm going to do is... Ready. You're going to need several large buckets, and uh, this right here, I cut the bottom out of this bucket here, and I took a, uh, a splatter screen. Got it at a garage sale for a quarter. Uh, the, the splatter screen, I took the screen out of it, I took the handle off of it, I drilled a couple holes in the bottom of this bucket, and I uh, 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 little silicone, little silicone smeared on top of it, and bolted it to the bottom of that bucket, and 
it works great. I mean, uh, it works real good. So, I'll put that right in there. I'll set these over here out of the way. Now, first part, first part of my process is I'm going to just go in and get some of the some of the slurry out of the cement mixer. And oh, it's it's nice. It's it's really creamy. And all I do is pour it into the heavy strainer. Pour it right through, goes right through there, real easy. Then I just take it and let it strain right through there. And you're gonna see all the rocks and sand and gravel that is not gonna break down. So I take that right there and dump it and that'll be disposed of later because uh, uh, it just won't be used. Now, what I'm gonna do is take this and I will take this right here. This is the nice slurry that I got where I've removed all of the, the big pieces of sand. Now, you wouldn't think there would be a lot in left in here, but oh, I was mistaken when I first started doing this. I poured in here and through that the splatter screen. Now, I don't know what the mesh size is for a splatter screen, but I know it's not, it's small, but it's not that small. But, because it, it will leave, it will, once you get through straining it this way, it's going to leave uh, what's called grog, uh, uh, larger particles of grog in, in this. So, uh, if you desire to have it even finer yet, you would have to get a finer mesh screen to, to uh, make the clay even a finer product. But, I take that and mix that and let that go through that strainer screen. I normally I, at first I, I was using uh, I was using a little paddle on the on the screen to scrape it through there but I found out that it's it's quicker to just take it and kind of shake it and let gravity take it through there so and you'll find out real quick how much more sand and gravel that's still in there that's really really fine I mean it is real fine which and this is something you don't want in your clay yeah it's 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 got a really really fine sand that's left and what I do is I'll, I'll take that and I'll dispose of the that at a later time. So, all right, before I add this into here, I'm gonna add some uh, apple cider vinegar. You know, I'm gonna, this is about a, this is a five gallon, five, gallon, five six gallon bucket. I, I think it's bigger than five gallons. Uh, it's about a six gallon bucket, but I'm gonna add in about a, about a cup or so of vinegar. I want it to break down real good. Uh, learned that from some of the people that have trained me and I'm gonna add the slurry that I've just done into this bucket now I'm hoping this is gonna be big enough well maybe yeah I want to make sure that I I get this all mixed up real good with this other and boy I can smell the vinegar I'm gonna whew. but uh get it all mixed up the longer this sets, the, the more it starts to dry out. What happens is the, uh, the water begins to separate from the clay, and you'll get a large amount of water that sits on top of the clay. And I will come out here and check on it every day or two, and I will uh, how it looks and I also will remove 
a lot of the water that's sitting on top. What I do is, you know, I, if I, I've come out here with a sponge before and taken the water off the top and put it back in my concrete mixer so that I don't waste any water or any of that vinegar. So, I get this all mixed up. And I'm going to get all this mixed up. And then when this settles down in a day or two, I'll come out here and I'll check this to see how much of the water has separated from the clay. And I will try to try my best to get as much of that off of there as possible. And that way I that's the beginning part of the process. And this is kind of a actually kind of a pretty fast method on getting this broke down. The drying part is a little more tricky. So, okay, uh, this is where I make <laughs> make my creations. Uh, uh, well, this is this is I have my my little area here. Uh, this is this at this this right. Uh, my vinegar up because I'll need it for making more later. Uh, this is the pot some of the pottery that I made when I was visiting Simon Leach at a workshop. Uh, some of the things that I made, you know, just that, it broke. It was awful thin, so that's okay. Uh, I made a lot. I made a few things there. Uh, now I'm going to uh, show you uh, the really the end results of uh, the clay. Uh, I've tried a couple of things. Well, I've, I've tried one thing to uh, uh, dry the clay, and drying the clay is very important Take because normally that takes the longest amount of time. I took, it, I, I took a couple pairs of pants and sewed up the legs, sewed up the ends of the legs, poured the clay slurry into the legs, which makes it very, very heavy. So you have to have something that's really strong to hold it up, which... I would not suggest doing that because uh, you've got uh, 100 pounds of clay. You got 100 pounds of clay, and uh, uh, and it's, it takes seven, eight, nine days to get it all dry. And the outside will be dry before the inside, and then you know, so so it, it's a lot of work. So what I've done is I've ordered a uh, a large mold from Pure and Simple, and I'm going to be making some plaster casts like I've seen. Uh, several of the uh, other potters on YouTube do and so that's what I'm planning on doing to speed up my process on the slurry that I have out there but the final process of some of the clay that I've made so far uh, uh, this is my this is my little uh, 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 pottery area uh, my wheel uh, my, my pug mill which I know a lot of people uh, a lot of potters don't uh, have or can't afford it. Uh, I'm just very fortunate in having it and, and my kiln uh, back there uh, 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 It's a even heat ramp master all programmable. It's it's a really nice piece of equipment uh, but I'm going to show you some of the clay that I have uh, Dried so far and it needs to be run. I haven't run this through the pug mill yet. I haven't run it through the pug mill, but uh, a lot of this clay has, it's, it's really nice, it's good and plastic. Uh, this is all still moist. Actually, this was, it took about uh, seven days to dry out uh, a pair of pants that was full of, this is what I got out of one pair of pants. I'm looking, I don't know what this thing weighs, but that's a lot of clay. But it's all nice and smooth and silky. It needs to dry out a little bit more. So I, and, uh, I'm, so I can run it through the pug mill, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's it's some it is some nice clay. So uh, and it doesn't feel like it has too much grog in it. If you look at it real closely, it's nice and smooth. And uh, if I if I need to uh, 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 let's say uh, re uh, restrain it with a finer mesh sieve then uh, that's what I will, uh, I'll do, but 
once I since I've already got this part of it done, it should be fairly easy. But uh, I'm not going to run the pug mill today, but I will make another video of running all the clay uh, through the pug mill uh, to show how well it comes out. Illinois clay, uh, I think uh, it's it should work out pretty good. So uh, this is Eddie, and uh, uh, this is my pottery, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll watch some of the other videos. Thank you.